1983, Steve Jobs was quoted as saying, as he tried to lure John Scully from PepsiCo to come and uh, work for him as the CEO of Apple, I quote, do you want to continue to sell sugar water for the rest of your life, or do you want to come with me and try to change the world? And I think what you're going to see today is we, Renmatics, and our technology is going to try and change the world. So I would, I would position to Mr. Jobs, you can do both, and we're going to show you how that can be done here today. Um, so we have a wonderful program for you, uh, and uh, I want to get started on that program, and it's a real pleasure for me to introduce our first guest. Um, and let me just give you a couple of remarks about our first guest before I formally introduce him. Uh, he has backed ventures which have, start, which have started companies which have created more than 150,000 jobs. And for those who are local, that's two or three Dows, two or three DuPonts, that's a lot of jobs. Uh, and not surprisingly, he's on the President's Jobs Council. Uh, he works for a firm whose motto is, in search of the next big idea. So he likes disruptive things which add value. Um, he has personally invested a lot of his time and effort in really trying to shape the clean technology shifts which will lead to a more prosperous economy and create more jobs in this country. And so he's putting you know, his foot where it needs to be in his mouth to really drive and, and make that happen. And, and equally important to that, and it's somewhat consistent with who we are and the rheumatics culture we're trying to build, he's a real fun guy to work with. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first guest to you this morning. We have a big warm welcome for Mr. John Doerr. Fun guy to work with. Honey, honey. That's what Johnny Carson did, right? You just Welcome uh, to uh, a conversation about sugar. And uh, while I'm uh, extending welcomes, I, I wish you would uh, join me in welcoming uh, the great governor of Pennsylvania, Tom Corbett, who's joining our conversation. <laughs> governor Corbett. Uh, so we'll have a chance to uh, hear from Governor Corbett uh, later in, in, the, in today's, this morning's program. And I want to thank each of you for coming here this morning. Uh, we're not here to run a commercial for Ren Medics. Rather, we've uh, reached across the country from California to Washington, D.C. to bring experts here and uh, talk about the importance of, of sugar, and what it means for the future of uh, technology, uh, for the country, and, and, and for uh, Pennsylvania. I'm going to introduce the panelists that he, we have here in, in just a moment, but I wanted to set the stage with a little bit of context for you. Uh, you. You may recall that there was a physicist and a biologist and a chemist, and they were trying to make uh, sense of the ocean and the sense of the world. Uh, the physicist saw the ocean and was really uh, fascinated by the waves. He said he needed to do some really uh, deep research on what was on fluid dynamics, the energy of the waves. So he, he walked right into the ocean and was never seen again. The biologist said he wanted to do some research on flora and fauna inside the ocean. Uh, and so he dove deep into the ocean and also never returned. We're here today to talk about chemistry. And the great news about this story is the chemist waited a long time and then said, I'm going to understand what's going on. He observed, and then he noted in his notebook, physicists and biologists are soluble in ocean water. <laughs> so today we're going to make sense of the science of sugar, the science of innovation, and uh, the science, really, of the world we live in and we're raising our kids in. I think the revolution that is we're really at, at the beginning of is uh, profoundly important. In my lifetime in America, in our lifetimes, we've seen three really disruptive waves. The first was this IT revolution, right? It was the microchip and the internet and the personal computer, and it led to literally hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars of economic activity, with America being the worldwide leader in those industries. A trillion dollar economy, untold jobs. 
the second revolution, which was launched about the same time, was the biotech revolution. And it sprung from really fundamental advances in understanding uh, what it is that makes up genes and how genes are at the heart of all living systems. We sequenced the human genome. Federal research was crucial there. And it led to breakthroughs in nutrition, in agriculture, in the healthcare industry. I'm here today, and I expect you're here today also, because uh, I believe, we believe, that there's another enormous technology revolution underway, and that's in ET, right? IT, information technology, BT, biotechnology, ET, the new energy technologies. And we need innovation in these energy technologies. Uh, one observer said that uh, today's American energy strategy is to uh, borrow money from China, to buy oil from the Middle East, and then burn it all across the country in ways that aren't good for our economy, aren't good for our environment. Every piece of that strategy, the borrow, buy, and burn, has got to change. It's got to change in ways that's good for America's energy independence, good for America's economy and uh, good for the, the prosperous world we want to leave for our kids. We buy almost a billion dollars of oil per day, shipping hard-earned American dollars outside our country. And the technology we're going to talk about today can have a major impact in that. That's why this is important. Um, the role of sugar is not well understood. I think on this path to a more prosperous, uh, better future, we're going to find that unlocking sugar from cellulosic biomass is one of the most important steps that we can take. Because when we have access to affordable sugars, we're going to be in an economy where both manufactured goods and transportation are inherently more sustainable. They'll be based on sugars than renewable biomass, let's say wood chips. And people everywhere, people want to have goods, mobility, and sustainability. And we think we can get all three without any kind of compromise. I'm a venture capitalist, so I help engineers and entrepreneurs start new companies. Uh, I was also called on to be part of an advisory panel with Alan Coleman of DuPont, one of the great Pennsylvania companies, on, on jobs and, and competitiveness. And we have a great challenge in, in, in our country. There's a debate going on right now, right, between uh, are we going to cut the expenses in the federal government, which we need to do, are we going to be prepared to raise some taxes, which I believe at least we need to be prepared to do? But I want to say this about America's uh, opportunities. No amount of cutting or tax raising is going to get us where we need to go as a people unless we get growth. And so the big win here is to grow the economy and to grow America's future through innovation.